Hello everyone and welcome back to our book discussions from my new novel of Sheaves and Stars. This one is going to look a little different from the others today um, because what we're up to isn't officially a chapter but it's an integral part of the book. I call it a character insert and it's the first one of its kind in the novel so even though this is more of a writing discussion point I want to briefly address the origins of these so you'll know what to expect with them going forward. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out how I wanted to include other voices in this book besides Joseph's. Um, I had to decide who they would be, where they would go. There's a lot of different characters in Joseph's story. And I practiced a lot of different versions over the years trying to decide what I wanted to say in my interpretation. And one of the things I couldn't get rid of were the other voices, the other characters in Joseph's life. And as I started thinking about this story more professionally and realizing that every decision I would make has implications for the tone of the story, I felt very strongly about the fact that this needed to be mainly Joseph's story, but I wanted to include other voices. Now, if you've read my other novels, My Brother the King, My Rival the King, My Father the King, Jonathan and David and Mephi are equally important characters, and that's why I go back and forth between them equally. But here, I, I really wanted Joseph to be the main voice, and I wanted to write in a tense that allows you to be in the story with him. But I couldn't seem to get rid of the other characters' voices. I, I tried to do a version completely in Joseph's voice to help cut word count and focus on him a little more, but it really felt too depressing and, and too limited by Joseph's viewpoint. And also, the, the character inserts represented a great deal of um, research and character development over the years, and working through all the different choices I had. It was an overwhelming task, but I finally stopped and took inventory of the versions I had and, and just asked myself before God, you know, what version am I meant to publish? And I found that when I tried to cut the other characters' voices out, I really missed the development and the richness that they brought to the story, especially the fact that they show the hand of God working in Joseph's life where he's not able to see it yet. And there wasn't an easy way to work all that into his perspective. So I decided to keep the other voices, but that I would shorten their chapters into inserts in order to keep the focus on Joseph. I also made them past tense to separate them and emphasize the fact that you're following along with Joseph, not the others. And there's yet another element that emphasizes this, and I didn't add this until the very end of the editing process. I changed the headings of the inserts to be from Joseph's perspective as well. So my brothers, my father, the characters are named the way Joseph sees the people to emphasize the fact that it's still his story. Now, again, why does this all matter? You have lots of creative license as an author, but you have to consider what your choices are going to do to the tone and pace of the novel. You're not just regurgitating a story. You have to ask, what am I trying to share? Now, the character inserts were a compelling part of the culture I'd created with the story, and I felt that by arranging them correctly, I could use them to better effect. So with that foundation, what is this character insert dealing with and how does the topic relate to us? The title of the video deals with the question, can people thwart God's plan for us? Because the insert dramatizes the moment where Joseph's brothers, particularly Judah, are dealing with the aftermath of selling Joseph and the fact they made a decision they can't turn back from. And they tell Reuben, the oldest brother, who wasn't in on the selling, he wasn't willing to go that far. But now they're all in on this together, and they have to perpetuate this lie and fight off guilt by telling themselves, well, it's better than killing him. And one of the things I want to mention at this point is something I've never noticed until now, as long as I've dealt with this story. And that's the merit in studying the Bible over and over. It's like a living document, and the Word of God shows you things you didn't see before. So almost at the end of this project, the Holy Spirit showed me that Joseph's brothers really weren't considering God. In the insert, Judah's mind is echoing with what Joseph said. Do you think Elyon doesn't see? And you'll notice that throughout this book, Elyon is a title that means the most high, while El Shaddai is the name that Joseph's people gave for God before they knew his name was Yahweh. That was in the time of Moses. And that's mentioned in the character list. But Judah's realizing here that he acted like God didn't see or care what he did. By selling Joseph, the brothers really showed a lack of the fear of God. They may have been afraid later out of guilt, but they really didn't live in the fear of God. David in the Psalms talks about this, these kind of people. He refers multiple times to the wicked people who lie in wait for innocent blood and there's no fear of God before their eyes. And we know this is the case for Joseph's brothers because their actions mocked God. And they were utterly convinced that God would not help Joseph and that without Jacob, Joseph was helpless. They, they really didn't think much of Joseph or God. They didn't think Joseph would survive slavery and they never seemed to consider that God might help him. They just assumed that the dreams only had power in their father's mind. And if they separated Joseph from his ideal circumstances, the dreams would just fall apart. 
they never seem to consider that if Joseph's dreams were from God, God's plan would not be thwarted that easily. Now, for Joseph, I'm sure it seemed like his dreams were crushed in that moment. But later, we're going to see that God continues extending his hand to Joseph and saying, my purpose still stands. And if you're going to walk with me and trust me, I will lead you in the path I had for you all along. It just won't look the way you were thinking it would. And they all missed that in the beginning. Joseph's brothers were blinded by jealousy, which the Bible tells us is from de- is, is not from God. It's demonic. So if we're caught up in it, we need to bring it to God and ask him for help because it doesn't represent wisdom we need to listen to. It crowds out the fear of God and makes us bitter and leads to a spirit of violence, if not actions of violence. The brothers didn't stop to think about their jealousy or ask the Lord, you know, are Joseph's dreams from you? Because if they weren't from God, they were no threat. But if they were from God, did they really think that selling Joseph would stop him? Joseph's brothers were missing this kind of logic, and so was Joseph on some level. Everyone at this point was thinking that God's blessing was just connected to Joseph's ideal circumstances, the land of Canaan, Jacob, the doting father, and if all that was gone, if the perfect circumstances were gone, Joseph wouldn't survive, and there was no way he could walk out the calling of God. But we know from Scripture, man tries to thwart God's plans, and the king of heaven laughs. We want the will of God to unfold in a perfect atmosphere the way we think it should. And when that is disturbed, we think it's all over. But God isn't weak like that. He doesn't count slowness and delay the way we do. If we remain with God the way Joseph eventually does, we'll get through no matter what anyone does to try and mess up the plan of God. But we have to cry out to God and stay away from bitterness, knowing that God is the only way forward. Are we going to let what others said or did to us be stronger or bigger than God's purpose for us? Or are we going to keep our focus on God and believe? And now that's a hard decision, but I hope you're encouraged by this the way I am, that if God could still move in Joseph's life despite this tragic calamity that he never saw coming, I know he can move in mine and I know he can move in yours. So I hope you're encouraged and I will see you next time.